what a hoot! If only you knew! Because there's only a certain type of person that'll be on PC as opposed to console. Oh, one more time! Because there's only a certain type of person that'll be on PC as opposed to console. <laughs> To the people that genuinely clicked on this video thinking I was just gonna sit here and shit on console for 10 minutes, you're sadly mistaken. Well, it's probably good you're not gonna do that, because then my channel would have competition. And we can't have that now, can we? Most people, when they think about the comparison between console and PC, like to compare hardware immediately, that's not what we're doing today. We're not comparing hardware. Well, again, that's probably a good thing, because that's not an argument you were gonna win. Today, we're comparing the experiences of console gaming and PC gaming and seeing which one is better for which type of person, not which one's better than the other. Oh, so we're not comparing hardware, we're not comparing stats, we're comparing the experience. This will go well. Because objectively you could say console's better than PC and PC's better than console. It's all purely just opinion. It's literally not. There are countless things the PC can do that the consoles literally cannot. Then there's other things that the consoles and PCs both do, but the PC objectively does them better. But today, I'll be comparing the facts. Wait, so you said you're not comparing hardware, you're just comparing the experience, but now you're comparing the facts. We're only 30 seconds into this and you've contradicted yourself. Like, at least twice. So, if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, please be sure to drop it a like. Eh, yeah, skipping ahead. So the way we're gonna be doing this is I'm gonna be going over the pros and cons of console, then the pros and cons of PC. Console will be going first because, you know, you have to let the handicapped go first, guys. I'm sorry. But I thought it was all subjective. I thought there was no clear winner. I'll be going over PC at this timestamp, but I suggest you watch both segments so you actually get the full experience. Oh, don't worry. We're gonna watch both of them. I'm excited. All right, the biggest thing for me when it comes to console is the bang for your buck. For three to four hundred dollars off eBay, you can get yourself a brand new Xbox One X, which runs 4K at 60 FPS or 1440p at 120. Yeah, I'd like to see you build a PC that can do that for that price range. You did, you did not just say 120. Oh my God. So minute and 20 seconds into your video, we have the first just factual incorrectness thing. You just said the Xbox One X does 4K 60 or 1440. First of all, there is a tremendous difference between 4K and 1440. You shouldn't be using those interchangeably. Second of all, the Xbox One X rarely hit 4K 60. Like, you can probably count on your fingers how many games actually run at native 4K locked 60 frames per second on the Xbox One X. Like, it's not a big list, and it should not be a selling point. And then thirdly, I think we're on three. Thirdly, the Xbox One X maxes out at 60 frames. So when you say 120, you're just lying. Like that's literally not true. Also, the irony of you starting the video saying we're not talking about hardware and the PC guys like to start off the conversation going right into hardware. And then you went right into resolution and frame rate. Things that the PC objectively does better. This is already a train wreck. Consoles have always had a very accessible price range. The most I've ever seen a console go for is about 500 bucks, which is still pretty good if you consider the price to performance that you'd get for a PC of the same price range. If $500 is within your budget, you can do better on the PC, yes. I also really like the fact that consoles are all-in-one entertainment systems for a very, very decent price. The PC is also an all-in-one entertainment system and you can do it for the price of a console, yes. Which is why I think consoles are so mainstream. They're just really, really fucking accessible. Are they mainstream though? Like they're, they're marketed more, they're advertised more, but look at the player base. There are far more PC gamers than there are console gamers. It's not even close. Just because something is advertised more and you see more of it in the stores, that doesn't mean it's the main thing that people use. Not only that, but they have very simple setup, which is our next point. The PC also has a simple setup. I'm really tired of this point. You have to have Alzheimer's and dementia to have issues setting up an Xbox. You literally plug it in, plug in the HDMI cable, sign in on Wi-Fi, and you're done. It's funny that you bring that up because I think I've told this story before, but I had to buy a second Xbox One because the Wi-Fi just stopped working. My first Xbox One, it just stopped connecting to the Wi-Fi one day and I had to get a new one. But I'm sure we'll talk about repairs and hardware reliability a little later, huh? Like I said, consoles are, they have a little more of a, of a wider net. Let's compare this to like 
catching an audience with a net. The Xbox and the PS4 cast a very, very wide net. That is absolutely not true. The Xbox and the PS4 and the Nintendo, like all the consoles, they have a very, like very small net actually. And you can see that just in the genres of games that you find on these platforms. When's the last time you saw an RTS do really well on the consoles? When's the last time you saw an MMO do super well on consoles? When's the last time you saw a simulator do really well on consoles? When's the last time you saw a MOBA do really well on consoles? And if you're talking about a wide net in terms of like the software capabilities, like different apps and different streaming services, in what universe is the console more capable of those things than a PC? I just find it so funny you started this video talking about how you were going to be discussing the experiences and it's not a good thing to compare like hardware to hardware. And yet almost everything you've said so far has been objectively wrong. While the PC market cast a really big net, its net is a lot more confined because there's only a certain type of person that'll be on PC as opposed to console. <laughs> And that person is someone who wants angry little fucking spastic. I'm fucking around. One thing I've always appreciated my Xbox for is being mobile. People always bring this up, like the mobility of consoles. Like really, who actually cares about these things? Like who is actually actively bringing their console around from place to place to place? Like, is that just, is that just me? Like how often do you actually do that? Like, yeah, I'll confide that point. Like, oh, oh boy, consoles are more mobile than a PC, but I also didn't buy my PC to be a mobile device. So I don't care. This is something a lot of people do take for granted because take your fucking PC to your friend's house. Go ahead and try. Yeah, I could do that. A PC isn't nailed to your floor. It's not 50,000 tons. Yeah, it's bigger and heavier than a console, but if you have big ass muscles like me, it doesn't really matter. And again, what's the what's the context of me doing this? Like, yeah, I can bring my PC to my friend's house, but why would I do that? Can you fit it in your backpack? No. I mean, I can fit it in my car. Well, I, uh, I can fit mine but I almost can't really call that a PC. I almost can't really call it a PC. So you presented a thing that's a negative, you proved your own negative wrong, and then you discredited your own negative proof of the thing. That doesn't matter. Okay. In fact, I'm almost positive the reason my original Xbox One died was because I took it so many places and I've dropped it a few times and it's been through hell and back. And I'm surprised that the thing worked up until the point that it did. I'm just like kind of staring at the wall, like trying to think of what lifestyle would pertain you bringing a console frequently to different places. Another thing consoles have going for them is the quality gaming experience. Oh, goody, 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 goody. Another reminder that this is the guy who said we weren't gonna compare hardware. This is entirely dependent upon which console you have and uh, how much you care for it, like cleaning out the fans or reapplying thermal paste. Well, that's more of a PS4 thing. Who the fuck puts thermal paste on a console, excuse me? Yeah, I'm gonna throw shade. I can't go a video without throwing shade because you fucks have so many hardware issues, I'm sorry. You will have a quality gaming experience on a console as long as you take care of it. Wait, was that whole, you have so many technical problems, was that directed at PC gamers? It's hard to tell. The structure of this video is terrible. If that was directed at PC gamers, then I find it hilarious that you're saying that PC has a whole bunch of technical issues literally 20 seconds after you talked about how your first Xbox died. My Xbox One, even though the disk drive stopped working, the wireless connectivity was shit, my Wi-Fi card needed to be replaced. Hey, you and me both. It was still a quality gaming experience. Fucking how? I never had really, really bad FPS drops unless it was like a really humid, hot summer day and I was running it all goddamn day. And I've seen a lot of people with PS4s have, you know, fan issues or thermal issues. That comes after years and years and years of use, just like with a PC. Oh, so both are even there. Okay. If you have the exact same PC with the exact same specs for like three, four, five years, you should probably reapply thermal paste to both your CPU and your GPU at that point and clean out your fans at least every six months. Thermal paste to your GPU. Reapply thermal paste to your GPU. I'm just gonna let that sentence simmer for a second. For those who may not know, reapplying thermal paste to your graphics card is something you should only do every few years, like four to five years. And even then it's something that you only do if something is wrong. Not like it's not a regular maintenance thing. You don't know what you're talking about. So I suppose when it comes to like maintenance, they're kind of in the same boat. The thing about console is a lot more people don't know how to fuck with consoles. They don't know how to, you know, open them up. 
and actually fix them because, you know, consoles are fucking consoles. Yeah, you're not supposed to open a console up and fix it. They're literally designed to not really let you do that. So those issues end up going unnoticed or unfixed, which can degrade the value of your gameplay experience. And if you want to get those things fixed, you either have to replace the entire system or ship it out somewhere. For them to air quotes fix it like i hope you guys realize that when you when you send your xbox to microsoft or you send your playstation to sony they're like 90 percent of the time they're not fixing it they're just sending you a new one so i highly suggest that if you have a console for more than i'd say about three years it's probably best to open it up and try to clean out the fans unless you have something like like an xbox one x no i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend you do that i wouldn't recommend you open a console up if you don't know how to do it that's just my two cents uh this thing is literally impossible to open. Oh. 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 It's- oh. You just proved your own point wrong again. Now to go over the cons of console. Monthly subscriptions. Yep. No fucking hardware. Uh, what? Game selection. Yep. Sony and Microsoft are the most garbage companies on the planet. Hey, I like you now. And hardware issues are more difficult to deal with. Yeah, yeah, see, see, you're redeeming yourself. I appreciate it. Cons are going to be something I go over quickly because I want this to be a more positive video about both these gaming experiences. Monthly subscriptions fucking suck. Yep. Stop making me pay $10 a month to play online. Fuck you. Sony, Microsoft, you guys are really scummy companies, Microsoft especially, so I'd appreciate it if you guys cleaned up your fucking act. This video is from June of 2020. Bro, if only you knew what Microsoft was gonna do a few months later. The hardware sucks, but not terribly. No, it sucks terribly. Console hardware sucks terribly. Like I said, my Xbox One X can run 4K60 or 1440-120, so it's actually not, you know, abhorrent hardware. No, it cannot. Hey, I'm Googling this. Uh, to take advantage of 120 hertz, you need an Xbox One X or Xbox One S. Your Xbox One must be connected to a compatible TV or monitor that supports refresh rates above 60, which is something that people don't fucking realize a lot of the time. Just because your game is running at 120 frames, if your monitor is 60 hertz, then you're not going to see it. Uh, but even with the feature, don't expect system-wide improvements. Many Xbox One titles are developed with hard-coded frame rate limits set between 30 and 60 hertz. Interesting. 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 Yeah, the whole 120 hertz thing on the Xbox One X that's for the system, like the menus and the dashboard. That can go to 120 hertz, but the game is running at a different frame rate than 120. This is something people seriously need to fucking realize. It drives me insane when people don't understand the difference between refresh rate and frame rate. Your Xbox One X may be outputting at 120 hertz, but that game is still outputting at 30 frames or 60 frames. So who cares? You're not getting an improvement. This is why I hate when console companies talk about refresh rates. Like, oh, we support fucking 120 hertz or 240 hertz. Like, okay, what are the games running at? If the games are still running at 30 to 60, I don't care that your system can potentially hit 120 hertz because the frame rate's not improving. It could be better and it could be optimized a hell of a lot better too. For once, a console fanboy saying the consoles are not well optimized. Thank you for that. And game selection, something I was kind of contemplating taking off this list because consoles do have exclusives. Then again, PCs have emulators, they have free games, they have games you can pay for if you'd like, they have games that you could, you, you can make games if you wanted to, dude, like, that's why PC obviously wins this category, okay? That's weird that you say that because of before, in this video, you said only a specific type of person, specific type of gamer is on the PC, because the net is not very wide. It's so interesting to watch you backtrack your own thing minutes apart from each other and speaking of pc we're about to move on to the pros of pc well this should be interesting no not those pros i'm not talking about virgins fuck you uh -huh. so what are the pros of pc well everything but the main one is versatility now a lot of people will be like oh the main pro of pc is hardware well no um yes the main pro of pc is the fact that you can do anything i mean yeah that too how wait but you know, go back go back why why is hardware not a pro you want to play on mouse and keyboard that's cool you want to use a ps4 or an xbox headset don't care you want to run at 1440p at a fucking 180,000 fps that's cool yeah the pc can actually take advantage of higher refresh rates because we have higher frame rates too those things work in tandem together they are not interchangeable. All you have to do is put the money in. I mean, it doesn't even cost that much money. You said earlier in the video that $500 is reasonable for a gaming machine. So, 
Okay. And that's usually the thing with PC. You can literally do anything you want. You just have to be willing to put the money and the time and the research into do it. Money, again, it's not as expensive as people make it out to be. Time, it doesn't take that much time. Research, the fuck research do you have to do? That's why as time goes on, I am becoming a PC player more and more. In fact, the other day, I downloaded Crash Day, Far Cry 3, Injustice 2, and Wreckfest. Guess how much I paid for them? 1876. And what's also cool is I can run most of those games at 120 FPS. Oh. Okay. I don't get the point of. I, I don't know what the point of that was. Was I can run most of those games at 120 FPS on this shitty little laptop. Yeah, 120 FPS. FPS. Not Hertz, FPS. Which. Brings us to our next point, hardware. Oh, now we're talking about hardware, okay. You got an RTX graphics card, so you have realistic fucking lighting? That's cool. Realistic lighting is not part of the fucking graphics card. I'm so tired of people saying this. You wanna build a fucking gaming PC out of your grandfather's old desktop? That's fucking fine. As you guys can see, this also ties into versatility because you can literally do anything. I have a desktop behind me that has an i7-7700. Ew, I- Intel. Ugh. And like four gigs of RAM. Four? Hmm? F four? You four? If I upgraded that thing with another six to eight gigs of RAM and a 750 Ti, it'd be as powerful or more powerful than my laptop. See how easy that was? And guess how much I'd be putting into that desktop? Around 100 bucks. That's actually the easiest way to build a PC. Find a desktop that has a sufficient enough power supply and a decent CPU with a little bit of RAM. Buy some more RAM, buy a GPU, you're done. There's nothing really wrong with what he's saying here, so I'm going to start skipping ahead to when he starts talking about the cons of things, because that's when things get spicy again. Now we're going on to the cons of PC. Expensive as holy fuck. It's literally not. PC gaming is cheaper than console in the long run. PC gaming is not significantly more expensive than console gaming on the offset, and it's significantly cheaper in the long run. I've said this before, but PC gaming will usually cost you more than console gaming to like get into. Like usually your PC will cost more than your console, but when you factor in the cheaper games, the less frequent need to upgrade, the easier repairs, the lack of subscription services, the fact that you have control over how much money you have to spend on the hobby as opposed to consoles with fixed prices on most things, PC gaming is significantly cheaper in the long run. So yes, you have to spend more money to get the machine, but when you compare like a year's worth of PC gaming to a year's worth of console gaming after you get the machines, it's so much cheaper. And that money adds up. Modders? Modders are not a bad thing because modding is not inherently bad. Modding is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Modding can completely change the way a game is played. It can, it can add so much new life to a game. Yes, it can be used to cheat, but since when are cheating modders exclusive to PC? Sheer complexity. Maintenance. Oh, maintenance is a problem. Okay. I can't even remember the last time I had to do maintenance on my PC. Toxic ass players. Toxic ass players are literally on every platform. Professional players. Professional what or virgins. There's there's quite a few. <laughs> What's that? Someone's better than me at my hobby virgin There's quite a few cons I'm only to go over a few because the main cons of PC that irritate me the most irritate me more than console ever could So the main one that people complain about is the price The only people who complain about the price of PC gaming are people who haven't actually been PC gamers for very long or with very much success uh, yeah. You're paying for a quality gaming experience, man. I don't know what to tell you. PC does not come cheap. My laptop is sold for anywhere from five to $800, depending on which configuration you get it in. It's funny because 10 minutes ago in your video, $500 was reasonable for a gaming machine. It's not worth that much, which is why I'd, I've never really linked it anywhere, but you can see what I'm getting at. No, I can't. These things are a lot more expensive and usually you don't get as good a performance until you end up spending a lot more. Yeah, you get better performance when you spend more money. Weird how that works. But when you spend more, you get better performance than a console ever could. You can get better performance than a console for $500. The 30 series, if you can ever get your fucking mitts on them, 30 series beats the consoles, like all of them. Every 30 card beats the consoles performance. You can spend seven to $800 on a PC right now, and you can include a ray tracing graphics card in that budget. Graphics card is not what ray tracing comes from. And still have enough money to buy good enough components to have a really well-rounded PC. And then guess what? That PC with an RTX 2060 in it will stomp, will curb stomp the fuck out of 
any console for the next eight years. You don't even have to go to the 2060. The 1070 and the 1080 will beat the consoles, in my opinion at least. If you're playing in 1080p, the GTX 1080 and especially the 1080 Ti, those will absolutely beat the consoles. So I suppose it has that going for it. But guess what? Some of this shit is way too fucking overpriced. Don't blame the gamers, blame the GPU farmers. NVIDIA, who's paying as much as a used car? for a Titan graphics card. That's a screenshot from eBay. Nvidia literally has nothing to do with the price there. If you've done that, I swear to fucking God. I swear to fucking God. I mean, who's paying as much as a used car for a novelty console? If you wanna just talk about fringe examples, we can keep doing that. <laughs> but it's disingenuous to imply that these fringe examples are the actual cost of things. Cause they're not. You better let me at least play one game of Fortnite on it. A lot of people like to complain about the complexity. I've never heard an actual PC gamer complain about the complexity of PC gaming. It's another one of those things that people complain about from the outside looking in, but once you try it, it's immediately obvious that it's not actually that complicated. Oh, PCs are too difficult to get into, or I don't know how to, how to work all the parts. It's not that hard. Yeah, it's not that hard. You're right. So why are you giving any credence to the people who say otherwise? You can use a website like PC Part Picker to figure out uh, compatibilities between parts, but that's really about it. I wouldn't use PC Part Picker to choose out like pricing and everything because you're, you're better off going to Micro Center's website and pricing parts out there or going to eBay and pricing parts out there. Everything you just said is right. I'm just going to point out the irony of you saying a few minutes ago that extensive research is one of the problems with PC gaming. If going to a website to check compatibility is what you qualify as research, uh but the main issue with building a pc is uh the compatibility issues between hardware your sunglasses are stupid and a lot of people don't understand it so i'd recommend pc part picker if you are building a pc maintenance isn't something i'm gonna go over too much because i've already really talked about it i mean in a kind of wrong way yeah you imply that maintenance is like a frequent thing but you yourself have implied that you haven't really done that much with your computer you're also running four gigs of ram so I'm not sure that's a great authority on the PC platform as a whole. Look, there's there's a lot wrong here. I kind of just want to go play Apex. But like I said, every few months, it's nice to clean out your fans, take everything apart, dust everything out, because your PC will collect a lot of dust, especially like if you're like me and you're in a basement room. Fuck. Actually, I changed my mind. Yeah, I'm just going to go play Apex. This video was really difficult to get through. Look, PC gaming is not significantly more expensive than console gaming. It's not any harder to do than console gaming. PC gaming has far more variety, f a far wider net, if you want to call it that. And all you have to do to confirm that is just look at the most popular games on Steam and compare it to the most popular games on the PSN or Xbox Live. <coughs> oh boy. Whew. Okay. I got three hours before I got to go back to class. I am going to go play Apex. Bye.